expressed did not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Welcome to the American Veteran. I'm Dale Parrish, your host, with Carl Fowler as co-host, and also uh, joining us uh, this evening is, is Dave Jones. Uh, he was on a previous program, uh, Vietnam veteran, Army veteran. Our guest this evening is Doug Luker. Uh, Doug, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Doug was a uh, Marine, uh, with the Marines in, the, uh, in Vietnam. Uh, when did you join? I know I'm not, I know you wasn't drafted. Right. <laughs> At the, I enlisted in uh, January of 1968. Um, I went to MCRD, or Marine, Marine Corps uh, Recruit Depot uh, in San Diego, and then the rest of my training was all at Camp Pendleton in California, mm-hmm. where I went through infantry training. Um, and I, I trained as a scout sniper, and I also uh, went through Fifth Force Recon School in, uh, at Camp Pendleton. I forgot to mention, uh, Doug is also a commander of the Leather, Leather, Leatherneck Club in Columbia City, and he was a previous uh, a police officer here in Fort Wayne. Sorry, I didn't mean to quite interrupt right. you. That's quite all right. Yeah. Uh, after basic uh, and my specialty schools, then I, was, uh, I received orders for Vietnam. Uh, and uh, when I got to Vietnam, I was assigned to Delta Company, 1st Battalion, 26th Marine Regiment. Uh, that was one of the units that was uh, hemmed in a caisson uh, for the 77-day siege, but I joined them afterwards. Basically, I was a uh, replacement for those people who were killed and wounded at caisson. Oh. So, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and we were established uh, in I-Corps in the northern uh, quarter of, of Vietnam during that time. Uh, pretty much moved wherever things broke out, wherever yeah. things got hot. Yeah. Um, you were in there, put out the fires. I mean. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's one, yeah, certainly, I mean, uh, they would drop us in wherever things were happening. Wherever uh, we needed the right. most. Sure. Uh, the longest period of time, uh, when I, I was wounded on the 28th of December in 1968, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we were just outside of Da Nang at that point in time on Hill 190, uh, and running Pretty much what uh, Dave was doing as far as uh, ambushes and patrols and that type of thing, uh, uh, trying to keep the NVA from coming across the river, and uh, they were hitting the bills and resupplying themselves, and our job was to stop them. NVA? North Vietnamese Army. Okay. Right. Uh, after, after Ted of 1968, um, the VC were pretty much shot up. They were pretty much defeated as a force, and what you were... Uh, fighting after that was pretty much main force, uh, oh. NVA regulars, and uh, yeah. pretty well trained, pretty motivated individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned sniper. Yes, sir. You've done, you did a lot of that. Uh. Actually, for about the first um, month and a half to two months, I, I acted as a sniper. Uh, we were taking quite a number of casualties. And um, so at that point in time, uh, because I had a lot of specialty training as far as orienting through the jungle and calling in support arms and aircraft and that type of thing, um, I ended up being a a squad leader. Uh, As a matter of fact, for a very short time, I I ran the whole platoon for about a day and a half until we got another lieutenant Mm -hmm. there. But um, so I I basically acted then as a combat squad leader uh, from that point on. And we were doing pretty much the same thing that Dave was talking about. We had the hunter killer teams uh, that would set up ambushes and we started with four man teams. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, then when things got a little more hectic, uh, we went to seven-man teams, but they did not change the orders. Our standing orders, uh, our rules of engagement were that if uh, we came up against a force that was three times our size or smaller, we were ordered to engage. Uh, when we went to seven man, that just made it 21 people as opposed, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if it was larger than that, uh, then we were allowed to uh, use support weapons, whether we called in uh, mortars or artillery or, or aircraft, that type of thing. Uh, but uh, obviously, um, when you're springing an ambush, uh, if you've got good position and the element of surprise and, you know, uh, good weapons discipline, uh, a larger force like that can be handled. At least that was the Marine Corps' concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you was on the front line, or you was out in front of the front line. You were you were the front line, right? Yeah, and I and and really, I, I think in Vietnam, I think the front line is kind of a misnomer. You know, you think in terms of uh, the trench warfare or or you know uh, large troop movements. Uh, yeah. Most of the time, you were um, snooping around in you know in the jungle or uh, you know in, in some bills and that type of thing. Um, Quite often, these small units uh, got surrounded. It was it happened all the time uh, because it didn't take very many people to really outnumber you. So, mm -hmm. true, sure. You before we started the show, we was talking about being a sniper and how you felt about it, which I thought was very interesting and and explained a lot. Well, one of the things that. Um, I, I guess to some degree, there, when you're being shot at and you return fire and you take a life that way, uh, that's not something that not everybody has done. A uh, sniper's a little bit different. Uh, quite often you're looking through a, a scope, um, you're seeing the person's eyes, his face, facial features and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a lot more like murder. Uh, and some people can't do it. Um, I guess once you've been in combat for a while and you've had to um, place some of your good friends in body bags, though. Um, I don't think I've ever talked to a sniper, whether it was an Army sniper or a Marine sniper, didn't feel the same way, that when they touched the trigger and took someone's life, I always thought that's one that's not going to kill another Marine. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah, so, which, right. Yeah. so you're helping all your buddies out and everything. That's Hopefully. Some, something needs to be done. Certainly. Yeah. And you're just... Yeah a person there to do the job, right? I, I was introduced to someone uh, one time as a scout sniper, and, and he was a Marine uh, a Vietnam veteran. He said, you guys saved a lot of lives. And it, for a while, it kind of took me aback because that really wasn't our job, but in effect, it was. And yeah, it yeah. still is in the Marine Corps today. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Very good. I understand yeah. that. Did you run into any tunnels? Uh, I did, but I was not small enough to enter them. You didn't so have somebody, somebody like else's. Dave. Yeah, yeah. We had somebody like Dave, yeah, <laughs> but it wasn't me. So, yeah. yeah. What, the, uh, you run into snakes? And, uh, yeah, apparently I saw more snakes than he did. I don't, it seems like we were always running into snakes. What do they call them, yeah. a one-step snake well, or they, something? That's the bamboo viper, certainly, but they have a, a <laughs> wide variety of snakes, and, uh, you know, when you're crossing a river and they're swimming in between you and things like that, it's a little... <laughs> unnerving, you know, but uh, it's just a it's a hostile place to fight a war. I mean, the, the mosquitoes and the flies were terrible. The rats were terrible, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know the leeches. I, I came off of one patrol one time with nineteen leeches hanging oh, off geez. of me. You know, yeah. and, uh, it just it's just uh, not a, not a vacation spot. At least not for me. <laughs> That's for sure. How'd you get the leeches off? Um, Insect repellent uh, oh. is, is the best way. Uh, yep. Just a little bit of bug dope on it, and they they kind of turn gooey and curl up and fall off. So, oh, but then you got to stop the bleeding because usually you're bleeding from them. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you was in Vietnam how long then? Just about four and a half months before I got wounded, uh, and then I um, I was uh, in the hospital for about five and a half months. Oh, and sure. I got out of the hospital and out of the Marine Corps on the same day. Pretty serious. So it was, uh, and that was uh, when I first got hit. Um, I was at First Med Battalion in, in intensive care for six days, and then I went to uh, 249th General Army Hospital in Japan for about six weeks, uh, about 17 days of that in intensive care, and then. They flew me from there to Alaska. 
uh, to Scott Air Force Base in Illinois and finally up to Waukegan to uh, Great Lakes Naval Hospital. Yeah. And for the remainder of time, that's where I was. Did you yeah. feel a sense of relief coming back home? You know, it, I would have. I, I'd yeah. Say, Thank I, God I'm leaving here, you know. Well, but, you know, it, it, it wasn't very long in Vietnam before I knew I wasn't going to live through it, you know. Right. And here you are. I, I had 36 wounds. So okay. um, pretty well shot up, um, but still you're alive. So there's that sense of relief. Later on, I think it gets to you, uh, you carry around a lot, a lot of survivor's guilt. Um, yeah, the, you could have done more, should well, have done more. Well, you know, you look at uh, the 58,000 names on that wall, yeah. and I've had a pretty full life. I've had a, uh, you know, I've got a wife and a daughter. My daughter is going to be in Afghanistan on Monday, by the way, so she's been mm -hmm. following the tradition. Uh, you know, I've got, uh, I had a, a great career, I, I own a house, I've got hobbies, I've got friends, I've had a, a very, very full life. And then you look at those guys that only got to be 19 years old, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's that's the thing that, <laughs> how come them and not me? You know, yeah, you have to deal uh, with that. our hearts are with them all the Certainly. time, you know. And we'll never forget them. Right. There, but for the grace of God go I. Right. You know. You left Vietnam, you've still felt Geez, I'm leaving those guys behind. Absolutely. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Job unfulfilled. Yep. And then when I was in, in Japan, they uh, took part in a major operation. Everybody in my platoon got hit. Oh, uh, you know, yeah. and you think I should have been with them. I should have been there with them. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, what weapon did you use? Is it an M16 like Dave did? Or? Well, initially as a sniper, uh, we used a, yeah. a Remington uh, Model 700. Uh, and 308 caliber is a civilian designation 762 mm -hmm. uh, with a three to, three to nine red field scope uh, and 173 grain boat tail Lake City ammo. Uh, very, very accurate round. Initially, when they put snipers together, they were garnering whatever kind of hunting weapon they could get just to you know use pretty much anything. But that mm -hmm. became a standard for a number of years. And um, then afterwards, and of course, I, uh, uh, I used an M16 most of the time. Yeah. Uh, when I got hit, I happened to be holding an M79 grenade launcher because my grenadier got wounded, and we needed somebody yeah. to put out grenades. And yeah. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. 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 So you had to be flexible. Yep. Now, the Marines trained everybody for infantry duty, right? Everybody, Combat. right. Combat everybody duty. is a basic rifleman. Everybody goes through... Uh, at what the Army would call EIT, it's uh, Infantry Training Regiment. Uh, depending on your MOS or your job classification, if you're going to have an infantry MOS, you go longer into that. If not, then you would go from there to a specialty school if it's a radio operator or, you know, motor T or something like that. Sure, so. sure, okay. Uh, I had one question now. You was in the Army, I was in the Army, you was in the Army. So here we have a guy in the Marine Corps that enlisted. Um, did you feel that when you enlisted that you wanted to go to combat? You wanted to get in the fighting end of it? When uh, I was always impressed by Marines as a child. Well, I think uh, we all were. And um, actually, at uh, I was in college. Uh, I got mononucleosis, very bad, and I had to drop out of college. Uh, most of my friends were either going to school or they were working. And uh, I thought, well, this is going to be hanging over my head here. I might as well go over there and win that war and get back in college, you know. Yeah, right. So that's, you know, um, at the point in time, I, uh, it was in the post office uh, downtown, which is the federal building now, mm -hmm. uh, the recruiters. And uh, I remember, and I, I looked in, and I saw uh, uh, Navy personnel typing, and then I looked in, and I saw, uh, I, th I think an Army guy was, was uh, uh drinking coffee, and then I looked into the Marine Corps recruiter, and he went, <laughs> so yeah. um, that's pretty much, and actually uh, quite a number of my classmates from high school also enlisted uh, the day after I did, so. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, I, I was drafted for two years, and you go where the government sends you, sure. and you go do what they tell you to do, but I always had the feeling when you went in the Marine Corps, you were basically knowing that you was going to get in combat. Yeah, I Pretty never, much, yeah. 
I was afraid I was going to get in combat, <laughs> but you know, you go where they send you. Right. And, and I think we were pretty prepared by the time we went uh, over. I don't know that anybody can really prepare you for that. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I think, really. you know, we were pretty well prepared as far as uh, tactics and weapons proficiency and that type of thing sure. at the point in time when we went overseas. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I enlisted, but I enlisted into the artillery, yeah, sure. which I stuck with then. Mm -hmm. so. hmm. Well, see, I was drafted and I ended up in artillery. Yeah. But uh, yeah. that's where the government puts you where they need you. Certainly. And. Uh, not, not, not what you know. It's where they yeah. want you. Yeah. The fact is, knowing something might be to your detriment. They might put you someplace else. You know. But uh, I always admired a guy that went in voluntarily and did his duty, or what he sensed was his duty to his country. And well, I, never I, 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 I appreciate. That very much. There I were a number of people there that basically volunteered for the draft or knew they were going to get drafted and decided to let yes. you know. Mm -hmm. I guess I wanted a little bit of determination about uh, where I went, or at least in with which which service I went uh, mm -hmm. with, and uh, so that's why I enlisted at that point in time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you too was right in the thick of the battle and everything, and I I respect that very much. Uh, you talk about the ones that didn't come back. We all respect them. And whether we were there, whether we wasn't there, I wasn't there. But I really do look to the guys that was there and thank them very much. Oh, thank you. I thank both yeah. of you for your service yeah. very much. Yeah. Yeah. Did anybody make dumb mistakes to, or statements to either one of you when you come back? Yeah, um, my daughter is career Air Force, and I was telling Dave outside that uh, when she's home on leave, uh, people are constantly coming up to her thanking for her service. You know, yeah. uh, I can't even buy her lunch sometimes because they're you know. Um, when I came back and went back to college, um, you just didn't tell everybody that you were a veteran. I was pretty well scarred up, um, you know, so. Uh, but I even had a cover story, you know. I mean, basically, I told him that yeah, I, had, I was in a motorcycle accident or something like that. Unless you knew that the person that you were talking to was also a veteran, That's you a kind shame. of held that, you That's know, because you, you did take yeah. a certain amount of, you know, you didn't want to push a situation, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's just easier not to have to explain and not have to argue. Lots somebody. of times they wouldn't understand. Exactly. Anyways, yeah. there's there's that brotherhood, you know. Exactly. If you've been there and done it, you understand and you can yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. When we uh, came back from Vietnam, we landed at SeaTac uh, Airport, uh, right out at, at Seattle, Washington. Yes. And uh, as we were taxiing, 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 uh, there were a lot of protesters, oh. and uh, so they intentionally routed the airplane around back behind, so they would disembark and wouldn't be involved with them right as soon as we got it, off and yeah, things like that. Yeah, them in your face. But it was, uh, <clears throat> and yeah, you, you heard a lot of uh, unkind comments. Yeah. And their, but, their focus was all wrong. Yeah. You know, I can understand somebody protesting a war, but I can't <laughs> see confronting a veteran as there on their behalf. That's all wrong. I know? remember uh, I was with a guy, we were traveling together and we just, we were, in a, we were in uniform at, at, uh, at the Dallas airport. And we decided we'd go to this restaurant to get something to eat. Sure. And uh, we did. And of course, everybody get these different looks and things. And, you know, and you just keep your mouth shut. And, um, and uh, we got our order and things like that. And the waitress came back and she put our food down on the table. And she says, you, you, you guys are the ones that kill babies, aren't you? Oh, oh yeah, jeez, entirely uncalled for. She wasn't there. She didn't know anything about it. So Attitude we, so we sure. just, we just got up and left. Yeah, I attitude has sure changed though since then. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're a better country for it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think so too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was twenty-two years before I would, <clears throat> before I would talk about it. Yeah. And, and, and it only changed because a friend of mine 
ask if I'd speak to their history class at Elmhurst High School. And uh, mm -hmm. actually, yeah. I did the same thing at Northrop High School. Did for, you? for several years? Yeah, yeah they're yeah. seniors in history class. Yeah, Korean War veterans uh, do that quite often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Tell America program. Yeah. Tell America. Um, Let's get back to Vietnam. The Marines use helicopters also, just like the uh, Army did? Or? Yes, but in listening to Dave, he was describing more helicopters in one operation than I think the Marine Corps had in Vietnam. <laughs> they were oh. just like, but yeah, we, it, your, your mace, uh, major means of getting to where you're going to fight is a helicopter and uh, going in on a hot LZ and uh, that type of thing. And uh, uh, then after that, you're on the ground and we were on the ground for a long time. Uh, you know, most of our operations weren't measured in, in days or measured in weeks. We'd be resupplied and uh, that type of thing. And, you know, I mean, you're a long time without a bath. So. Yeah, yeah. Small groups like Dave's? For the most part, when we when we used the 100-killer uh, teams, like I say, there were either four or seven uh, for the oh, most part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, you know, most of the time, I think when you're moving uh, from one place to another, it's a platoon level or a company level, uh, and that would be helicopters and several different waves coming in. Okay, did either one of you get R and R while he was there? I wasn't there long enough. wasn't there long enough. I uh, I decided my R and R was going to be when I went home. Okay. Uh, there were cases where there, one case I know one of the guys came back and uh, he just get, kind of lost his train train of thought and and he was killed that afternoon oh boy so yeah. wasn't, I didn't, wasn't careful I didn't want to lose my edge a very very good point um, you mentioning that you didn't get a chance to clean up that's why I brought up the R&R &R. Uh, but you could once you went back to the base right well, <laughs> we didn't get back. To, we didn't get back to a base very much. Well, I mean, there huh? was just. Uh, uh, and I've heard tales of, you know, Valentine beer and that kind of stuff. And I, I we don't. I, I recall at one point in time we were pulled out of the field, mm -hmm. and um, we went into a rear area for our division. And uh, the helicopters brought us down. We got off. And we had our gear, and we were walking up a hill. Uh, and when we got up there, we were going to be able to take a shower and, and get a hot meal and that type of thing. And the helicopter got about 100 yards in the air and came back down, and they came back and said, turn around and get back on them. And fighting had broken out someplace hot else. Spot. So, yeah. you know, we were right uh, back, at, back it. at it. Right. Yeah. So it's just uh, I, had, uh, I had one chance uh, to get out on a little in-country r and &R. I was supposed to see Bob Hope. Uh, mm -hmm. when he was there uh, during just before Christmas and and uh, we were out on an ambush that night and got in one uh, really bad firefight uh, and, and then the next day uh, rather than go to see Bob Hope we were chasing these guys across the jungle so um, yeah. not quite you know yeah. it's, uh, you uh -huh. can't schedule those things you know? <laughs> right <laughs> day to day right yep. yeah. absolutely I guess the Viet, well you said the Viet Cong was pretty well beaten but uh, I was told they use a lot of used a lot of elephants to transport or yeah, not where I was supplies. at. Not, not yeah. with, uh, the the vast majority of the population in Vietnam is along the coastal plain. Ninety percent of it would be uh, along the coastal plain where there's there's farming uh, and that type of thing. That and the Mekong oh. Delta uh, yeah. that kind of cuts through the middle of the country. Uh, and most of the uh, the elephant transports and that type of stuff, and quite frankly, I think they used a lot more trucks. I mean, they they actually had highways built and everything yeah. else. So. Oh, yeah, okay. We we spent a lot of time over around the Ho Chi Minh Trail around Laos, and it was mostly either on foot or they they had some type of truck transportation or bicycles. They bicycles. Used bicycles a lot. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Very good. Uh, of course, they lots of them. Just went by foot, right? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a Ho Chi Minh Trail. Yep. I'm thinking. Yeah. That sounds like a very bad place to be yeah. at that time. Yes, at that point, yeah. your time of duty over there. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would have to agree with that. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, a lot of times I ask if you feel much different when you get back. <laughs> That's a poor question to ask now to either one of you. 
uh, you had to well, practically hide what you was doing. And yeah, certainly. I think your focus changes um, mm -hmm. a great deal after you've been through something like that. Um, you know, I I would come back home and, and uh, talk to people that were my age, um, and they were concerned because they had a flat tire or they had a fight with their girlfriend or they had, uh, you know, this wasn't working out for them or maybe they didn't get a raise or the boss chewed them out or something like that. And you just think, you know, no, that's so minor. nobody's shooting at you, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just a, you yes. just can't, you just can't relate to it. So, yeah. I mean, things uh, take on a little bit different importance. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it took a little time for me to, to get used to civilian life. Uh, because you're awake so much and and mentally on guard uh, that it took a little while to to readjust that uh, but um, you felt like you should be doing something you know and a lot of times I felt like I should still be there yeah didn't uh, want to let with, your guard with down my guys yeah yeah, yeah. understandable uh, what you said you was at uh, Washington D.C. and saw the, the the wall. Yes. Yeah. When was that? Uh, oh my golly! Um, probably at least a dozen years ago. Yeah. You haven't been there yet, Dave? No, I haven't been there yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went. Uh, I went to see it at three thirty in the morning. Yeah. See any names you recognize? Absolutely. Did you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Matter of fact, they've uh, they've got people there that will help you find names. Oh, you did know? they? And uh, it, the wall is those dates of death uh, on the panels, and that's the way they're they're separated. Oh. And so I asked for a particular period of time, and they said, you know, who do you want to find? And I said, I've got so many. Um, just get me to that time period, and I'll go both directions. Yeah. And you know. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I thought it was just random. No, no, it's it's a day to death. Yeah. Okay. We was uh, Washington D.C. a few years ago, and mm -hmm. we didn't make it to the wall. I, I wanted to see that. I, I've been to the wall though, on was, other trips. Yes, yeah. uh, I've been there three times. The youngest uh, vet in Vietnam was 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Average age was 18 to 21, I think. I was 21 when I was there. Was you? And I was the oldest guy on my team. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was 18 when I went in. Yeah. I thought, go in and get it over with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was about a, I was out before I would have been drafted. Yeah. I think it was about 22 years old when they was drafting yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had no problem, no no problem going into the service. Yeah, I served your country, and, and uh, most most yeah. of my most of the, the guys my age, we all felt the same way. Yeah, at that time. Mm -hmm. well, I think some of it. Had, my dad was a World War II veteran who was, was wounded it? and captured in the Battle of the Bulge, and oh. um, so I mean it, it just. It never occurred to me that I was going to go to Canada and go fishing. <laughs> you know, yeah. it just wasn't going to yeah. happen. You know. Yeah. 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 And I didn't understand that either because to me that ruins your reputation 